Hey folks, and welcome to I Heart Board Games. My name is Jesse. I'm Melissa. And we are here to do my top 10 board games. It's a long time coming. It's a really hard list to make. So let's just go ahead and say, this is my top 10 board games for 2021. Because <laughs> that's bound to change. I think after you did yours, yes. things changed already. It's like, oh, I should have put this game. Well, you played new games since. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, this will like, definitely be on my ooh, top 10. Oh, I like this game. So stay tuned for that next year. Yeah. <laughs> but right now, let's do my top 10. We're going to have some honorable mentions in there, too. That'll be coming in right before the number one. So let's get started with, by the way, we have put all the games here for you to see. Last time they were off camera for yours. So this is a sneak peek. Some of them aren't real. So if you want to make assumptions based on what you've seen us play at twitch.tv slash heartboard games, give us a follow and subscribe here, please. Go ahead. Make your assumptions. Where is it? Where's the number one? Well, right now we're going to find out what the number 10 is. Ten. What do you think? Oh, looking at this here, number 10, Whitechapel. <gasps> you was, saw me going I for was, it. I was seeing you sneak on over that a ways. <laughs> Letters from Whitechapel is a game from Fantasy Flight. Uh, it's a game of cat and mouse. It plays well at two as well as six. Um, it stays on the table for a while, but it's such a fun time, especially I prefer to play Jack to get away. I've always had a fun time every time we bring this out on stream. Um, what are your thoughts of Whitechapel? Um, I really liked whenever we played it and the chat uh, during the game actually kind of tried to help me <laughs> like while you were because I do prefer you to play that role. Mm. Um, it just works out so much better. Like that role needs to be with someone that's just that strategic little element that can like move around and just ever so slightly evade the, the rest of the players. Yeah. Runners up to this. I like Spectre Ops as well. Mm. Um I have the Broken Covenant uh, version of Spectre Ops. I still don't have the original someday, but I really like it. But I think this wins it for me because it's simpler. Uh, it's easier to explain and everything like that. But Spectre Ops is a close second place, but it's not in my top 10 because we just don't have it. And therefore, I don't get to hang out with it as much. But that's number 10. Yay. Very nice, strong start with the number 10. So number nine, since you're so great at guessing, what do oh, you think so, it is? So, so I'm not even going to move. Because you were going towards the table. Oh, he's going that direction. All right. Oh, goodness. Number number nine. Just one guess. That's all you get. Just one. Not too much time. Mm, just throw I, out a guess. I want to say tyrants. That's just, that's. Oh. We're over here again. Oh, so good. Tyrants a little higher. Clank, Clank in space. I, this, I would have thought this would have been a little higher, but... Well, this game is actually, in my opinion, made better by the expansions, but because it does suffer some uh, graphical flaws. Some of the rooms are really small and stuff like that. But it makes up for it in the charm of the art. It's really simple art, but funny art, when, especially if you're a sci-fi fan. And deck building mixed with this push your luck um it just makes for a great game they can laugh at themselves in this game there's a bit of comedy in it and i like that mixed in with the games and it when it's well done sometimes it's obnoxious but clank and space does it well yeah you see that mostly in the cards the cards have some really uh really nice uh, art to them that's that that's where i see the most comedy in it and it's done really well yeah clank and space it's a fun game if you haven't had played clank or clank and space Either of them are great. I just prefer Clank and Space because of the uh, because you can change the board up. It's it's um, modular, and the expansions make it even more modular. So that's why it's my number nine. Number nine. So now, what is my number eight, Melissa? Oh, my guessing is going so well so far. Let's see. Well, you're fifty percent. I'm at fifty percent. I don't think you'll get this one. All right, number eight. Um, I'm going to go with Black Fleet. Oh! Whoa! 
Glux, what a Glux. surprise. This is a game I enjoy playing every time I play it. It plays two to four and plays in about 30 minutes. Really easy to explain. Everyone has a bag of 24 little flat chits. On one side is a six, one side is a one for eight of them. Another eight has a two and a five. It's just like dice, three and a four. And you're putting them on this board and it's really strategic. You're trying to occupy the rooms with the most pips. I just love the way it makes people think whenever I, they play this game, and they always have a good time with it. And it's a game that not a lot of people know about. So if you ever have the chance to play Glux, the rulebook is really short. This is a great game to play at a convention, maybe, uh, if you're just looking for a new experience. And for that reason, it's my number eight. What do you think of Glux? I like this one. Like what I've Glux. noticed. What I've noticed now with all of the ones so far, it's very that strategic move on the board kind of you know it's like. One's got the modules, this one has the find the rooms, the other one has the secret address. They all have that same kind of little mechanic. I've kind of um, noticed they're all... Yeah, light to little, me little medium strategies. Mm -hmm. I could see that. Yeah, some simplistic strategies, but still has that quality that you look for and that kind of, you know... This is the simplest one so yeah. far. But I like this one. This one is very colorful on the table, too. Yeah. The, the pieces. But yeah, um... I like it. Yep. Number eight. Very nice. Looks. So what is number seven? Or what do you think is my number, number seven? Number seven. Yep, your guesses are falling apart, but oh. but there are less games now. <laughs> now there's less. So better better odds. Um I'm, I'm almost wondering if, if there's some red herrings in here. There's lots of red herrings. <laughs> and I'm I'm falling for the red herrings. Um I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with going with Black Fleet. Let's see if this Oh Paladins of the West Kingdom is my number seven game. Mm. This is probably the heaviest to come out so far, followed by Whitechapel. Um this will be on the table for about an hour and a half to two hours. This pack is it's <laughs> it's a box that is packed. Yeah, it is like you see a small little box and you think, oh, you know, not much going on. And then you feel mm -hmm. it's like, whoa, there's some weight to this box. Yeah, it's just a fun game all around. Once you understand it, like the going through the rules, you're like, oh, my gosh, this seems like a lot. But once you understand it and get it going, this is a game that just flows so well. And a lot of people say Viscounts is their favorite. I haven't played it. See, and I was surprised when the I Kingdom. saw you pulled this. Of the West Kingdom games, I thought you would have pulled Architects. No, I like this more. Because that's one of mine that I like in the West Kingdom. I like Kingdom. it too, but I like this more. Oh. So I really had to choose between the two. I think it's because I've played Architects more. I haven't played this one as much as that one. So the perspective of like what I've played more. But this one, I, I when I played it, it's really nice as well. I like the heavier game. And I think this one just feels like it has a great middle and end. And I like games, you know, this is a game with set rounds and stuff like that. So it feels like you're going through a full story. Uh, you do everything typically that you want to do because you know you can't do it all. And um, yeah, it just looks great on the table, does everything right. And it's part of that West Kingdom, North Sea, all that stuff, all, all that Garfield games goodness. And Paladins, my number seven. Very nice. By the way, if any of these are in your top ten, let me know. Or if you're not fond of them, let me know why. Because I like them. We don't all have to be the same. <laughs> but I want to know what you think of these games. So what do you think is my number six? Well, I keep thinking maybe Black Fleet is the red herring. Or maybe you put an honorable mention. Um, and now I'm, I'm thinking more towards going back to my tyrants from before. So I'm going to say tyrants for the number, what are we on? Six. six. Yeah, number six. I'm going to say tyrants. Oh, goodnesses. Castles of Burgundy. The Castles of Burgundy is my number six. This is from Stefan Feld. This is a classic. This is one of the ones we have first got. It is the first German game we picked up. Yeah, this one's got some wear and tear on it for good measure. But it's good. <laughs> but, um, it's, but it's a good one. That's that's why. <laughs> I like the old art. The new version came out, which has a great cover. But inside the box, I just like this one more, especially since you didn't get much of an upgrade when it came to 
component quality. It was mostly the same. They just changed the way it looked uh, and the way it fit on the board. But I don't know. This is this is my version of the Castles of Burgundy. Which version do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. This, I mean, it plays great at two, plays great at three, plays great at four. This is a game I could just fire up and go with most gamers because they know how to play it. Yeah, I like it. It's definitely a good uh, gateway game as far as for gamers coming into the First hobby. strategy. Yeah, like if you want a... I don't think your, it's a great gateway... If you're if you're into that Euro games, like it's a good Euro style gateway, like for a strategic play. But it, it, for a strategy game, it's really easy going. And it's, it's something Once I... Once you understand enjoyed. it. Yeah, I've, it's something I've enjoyed playing all the time, like... Always, always up for a game of castles. Yeah, this was on your yeah. list as well. I don't remember what position it was, but yeah, it might have been a little higher. But of course, you know, I, it's <laughs> always one I ask to play. <laughs> so, Castles of Burgundy is my number six. Ah, so number six. I'm not doing too well with these guesses, y'all. Well, you <laughs> got like, the first one. So I got confident. that first one. Yeah, because you rolled your chair over to that way. Okay, so let like, me roll oh. my chair over. <laughs> you roll your chair over there. All right, what do you think is my number five? Oh, goodness. And then, like, actually, when you said Paladins, I was between it, but I went that way, and as soon as he's like, no, I just second-guessed myself. I was not thinking. Well, this one will surprise you. This one will surprise me? Oh, what the Lord's the first surprise? This is number five. Oh, gosh. All these are so good at this point. I know, I know, time, yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to say Azul. I'm going to say Azul. Oh, come on! It's Werewords. Werewords? I grabbed the old version of Werewords. It's actually an empty box. Yeah, we have the components <laughs> elsewhere. This is a game we've played so much that we've had to replace this version. Mm -hmm. So that, for that reason, <laughs> and many others, Werewords is such a great game. It does things so well. I had such a bad first impression of it because we were at Dice Tower Con the year they were um, premiering this and they brought a giant speaker. Oh yes, I remember that <laughs> giant speaker. I volunteered in the library that year. Oh, I heard so the all, giant speaker. <laughs> all day you heard <laughs> Werewords <laughs> music. I was like, that is so oh. annoying. But it made but its it way. But it stuck with you. <laughs> yeah, it's a good game. A lot of people say it's like Insider. I played both of them, and I prefer Werewords. The little changes they made to it, uh, Werewords just fits for me. Mm. Uh, it's also a game we've made a way to play online on our channel with folks, and it just clicks so well. It's, I like it. It's something that I feel a lot of different ages, from your younger like children of a person that's getting into the hobby, from the kids to the adults to like your parents, like it's it allows for a lot of different age groups to mm -hmm. play one game together. It's it can be a really fun experience. Yeah. yeah, it's the only game I ever bought and then backed the Kickstarter of afterwards because it came with the new version. Not only because this one was wearing out for us, but the new art and higher player count and everything like that. We sat here playing this game for. Hours and hours one night, I remember. Oh, yeah. It's just like two, three hours later. Oh, like, y'all still play Werewords? Yeah, because yeah, we were like, should we play something else? Eh, let's just do another one of these. Yeah. Werewords. My number five. Yay, number five. Or, That's why yeah. I was like, oh, I would have thought that would have been a little higher, higher up on the... You think all these would be a little higher. I know. It's like, oh, they're all going to be higher. Strange. All right. So my number oh, gosh, five was getting... Werewords. What is my number four? We're getting to, like, top five... <laughs> Realm. Ooh, what's gonna be number four? I say Tyrants of the Underdark. <gasps> no, but it's that would be I'm just I'm <laughs> I'm not doing too well. Hopefully y'all at home are doing better at y'all's guesses. Maybe y'all are guessing better than I. <laughs> Maybe, let me know. Uh, Mansions of Madness, second edition, is my number four because this game has given us so many surprises at the table. It's a game that a lot of people have issues with integrating the app. This one does it so well that it just gave you a whole new experience. And it, I look forward to playing this over and over again. It's um, 
I don't find as much replayability with some of the um, maps, but they do change it up to where you can replay it. You just know where the story is. It's just mm -hmm. the puzzles are different and the map could be different. Um, but that's not to say I have played many of these maps <laughs> over and over again. I really enjoyed one time we streamed the large five hour campaign. The way they did it made it not seem like five hours. Like the way they broke up the story, it's just great. Yeah. Um, and it made me really appreciate the game, not just making a long campaign, but taking the idea that this w campaign will be long, so let's make it worth your time. And uh, so if you've ever been afraid to do that big, long campaign that's on the app and you have this game, jump into it one day when you have the time because it's a quick five hours. It's fun. Yeah. I'll say from personal experience with it, I'm not usually one for the really long games and it's got to be something worth the time for me to get into something. And this, this is one of the ones that definitely like we've had hours and hours long game sessions with friends and it does it really does seem quicker than mm -hmm. than you think it really does it's also the easiest it's the biggest game that is easy to explain to a new player you sit them down and it's just intuitive and whenever a game gets intuitive rules right then you know they did something right because you sit down with a new player and be like okay you can move to and anything else you want to do that you think you can do, chances are you could probably do it. I mean, I've never had an issue teaching this to somebody. And it does come from some excellent minis. There's like tons of them in yeah. this game. Oh my goodness. So Includes 32, minis. but we have several expansions. Yeah. So we have lots of extra monsters and stuff like that. So that's Mansions of Madness, second edition, my number four. I can all imagine you have so many highly regarded things to say about that one. And it's four. Woo! These last three. These must be biggins. Yep. Oh, the stacks are shrinking. I've already had my eyeballs on two of them since the beginning for like one and two. So now my list just, is on my phone. Yeah. So now it's just a matter of figuring out what might be three, and I think it's Champions of Midgard. My number three. What? Istanbul. Ooh. So I might be. Wrong in my assumptions of one and two from before. I don't know. We'll see. This is my number three. This was a Kenner Spiel des Jahres oh. nominee um, in 2014. It didn't win, did it? It's got a little. Maybe it won. I don't remember. Let me know in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a medallion. Yeah, the I'm medallion usually that. means it wins. Yeah. It would it would say nominee, but there's that keyword under it. Anyway. This is a game that's always different every time you play it because the board is randomized. Mm -hmm. It's it's a racing game, and I like a lot of racing games, even though you haven't really seen... I don't know, Clank is a racing game, yeah, I would Clank, say, yeah, in a yeah. way. Um, but yeah, this game, you're racing to get a certain number of gems, depending on the number of players you're playing. But I have the app of this, and it's a game I could just fire up and just go over, over and over again. Just because it... it has the right level of thinking to be a lighter strategy game but if you want to do it well then you can do it well and think a little longer and work out the strategies to where you want to be i really like this game this is definitely one i would not have like i i thought this was either honorable mention or or harry i did not realize oh, no. you liked this one so much. i mean i knew you liked this one but not like this high level, like up at the top. It's funny, like two years ago at game nights, I was always willing to teach this game to somebody. And it, I think it kind of picked up with our game group that like, oh yeah, I will always play Istanbul mm. as a game. So so yeah. my my like always willing to play castles is, you know, like you're always willing to play Istanbul. Yeah, because it doesn't <laughs> spend a lot of time at the table either. Uh, 40 to 60 minutes on the box. We all know those can be off, but an hour is honestly on the high end of this game if you're going to play it. Um, assuming you know how to play and everything like that. So, yeah. But yeah. yeah. Istanbul, my number three. Number two now. Oh, I'm going to 
this. So now this changes my thought process because I that really did throw me. I did not think that would be like up there when it didn't get picked right away. So now it's like, ooh, now I'm not quite sure. Because there's like three of these that stand out to me that could be at the top. But unfortunately, only two of them are going to be at the top. So, um, oh, goodnesses, goodnesses, goodnesses. Because I think I know number one. I think I do. I'm going to say Champions of Midgard for number two. What's happening? What's happening? I was right on one! Yay! <laughs> Champions of Midgard is my number two. This is the uh, big box that has the uh, room for the expansions within it. And we have everything for this game. We have the, uh, the play mat, everything like that. It's such a good game. If you haven't played it, give it a try if you like worker placement. Um, the, the battles in it are not... If you don't like battle games, you still will like this because it doesn't feel like you're fighting, really. You're just kind of making things work on the table. If you don't like dice games, it still works because you're able to mitigate your dice and get the dice you need to do things. It's it's rare that things go badly for you in this game uh, just because you have so much control. Uh, oftentimes in this game, I'll find myself overdoing it, assuming the dice won't go my way, and I throw too much at these monsters and end up wasting my time. But... Um, it's a great game that I've learned how to teach really well, and it just works. It's such a fun game. This is a game that I feel real, like, there's a lot of times where I'll just be okay with playing a base game of something, like, it doesn't really need the expansions for it. Mm -hmm. This one, it's like, I want the expansions, like, you want more and more for it, um, and I really like playing this one as far as, like, it, it's it's more of a simplified battling, like, like you said, it, it doesn't feel overly battle heavy. Um, and then there's that worker, uh, you know, action selection with the with the worker. So it, it, there's always something you're able to do. Yeah, this was all Valhalla. The expansion was on my top five expansions that's here on this channel. It was as a short and um, well, I'm not going to spoil where that is on there, but it is on there because it is a must. If you're going to play this game, experience it with Valhalla. If someone approaches you without Valhalla, be like, I'm waiting for Valhalla. <laughs> Valhalla! <laughs> so that's my number two. So we're not yes. going into the number ones just yet. Yep. We're going to, I'm going to mention some honorable mentions, some that aren't even on this table because we don't own them. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm going to be brief, briefer on these. Um, first, my... Let's go over the ones that are on this table so we can wheel down the number one. Okay, so what well, I think might be honorable mentions that's on this there table. Are th there are four games that are honorable mentions on this table. Well, I'm pretty sure Tyrants of the Underdark is one of them. Pretty positive. Tyrants of the Underdark yes. is an honorable mention. This is a worker placement game. Uh, I'm sorry. No, it's a deck building game yes. <laughs> with um, area control. That, the area control, yes. Yeah. You do have little worker people, meeples, but mm -hmm. <laughs> they're area controlling places. Yeah, one of the things this game, playing it with less than four, is it cuts the board down, which honestly, it works for balancing. It just cuts down on the immersion a little bit. Uh, otherwise, it's a fine game, but I just... I really like deck builders, so that's why Clank in Space, this is on there. Um, it looks great. I love the colors that they use in this game. And I've always had a good time with it. But that's an honorable mention, Tyrants of the Underdark. So what's another one? Three left on the table. I want to say one of them is going to be Secret Hitler. Hmm. Look at the list. Look at the list. Silver and gold, not secret Hitler, oh. is um, here in my honorable mentions. I guess if you keep guessing wrong, eventually you will know the number one that's back there. Yeah. <laughs> Silver and gold is a great filler if you haven't played it. This is available at Target and um, easy to get. It's it's everywhere. 
often only found for 10 bucks. And in this game, it's a flip and fill, often called a roll and write, but you're not rolling any dice on this. You're flipping over a card and you're filling out little cards that are in front of you. And some of them give bonuses to others. It just, it's a great filler. Like this is one that I really like that we can easily bring like on a trip. It's easy mm -hmm. to store. It's a smaller box game, but it has a lot of, you know, a lot of playability like on the go. Kind yeah. of. You can bring it like we brought it on trips before. It's, you know. Now, it didn't make it into my top 10 because it's not something I could really sink my teeth in. But honestly, anything Phil Walker Harding is in my honorable mentions because <laughs> <laughs> I haven't found a game that I haven't liked from Phil Walker Harding. So thank you, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to another one. All right. Now, Secret Hitler. Unless it's not quite there yet. Oh, not quite there. Code Names <laughs> is on my honorable mentions list. This has really risen more so post pandemic. Mm -hmm. Not post pandemic, during pandemic. Post start a panda, <laughs> not the game. So this is available at codenames.games. We play it online and such a good implementation of it. Prior to pandemic, I would say it wouldn't even be an honorable mention. It's a fine game, but just playing it with others, just, I don't know, playing it more just made me like it more. Uh, I still think I prefer playing it online than on the table. I think it, it online it gives you more of an ability to play with like a bunch of different people you might not normally be able to play at the table sure. with and it just it gives so much more of a variety of like the thought process of what a person thinks of when they see this word in comparison with like oh wait I would have never thought of that and now you have like a new you know look at a word and how they can connect yeah and they also have duet on there, but with duet, it's not just a two player game. You can play with many more and it allows for new ways of communicating that aren't available in the actual duet game. Um, but code names, and I guess I would include duet in my honorable mentions, but this one was easier to grab for the box. <laughs> <laughs> so I have three more honorable mentions, one that is still on the table back here. The other two that aren't on the table, let's go over them right now. On BGA, there's a game called Russian Railroads. This is a game that's been out of print for quite some time, but it's coming back as Ultimate Railroads, and I'm looking forward to getting that one because this is a game that was introduced to us uh, by Vidger. Thanks for teaching us. And since then, lots of folks have played it on the uh, Heartboard Games uh, stream, the community, like... It's really cool to see that, like a game that no one had played, and then you introduce it and it just spreads. Like it's such a cool effect to oh, see yeah. that come, you know, that people like can like a game like that and it just spreads out. And now Ultimate Railroads is coming. Yeah, it's one that I played with you, just two player. But then mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I like this. I want to see it at more players. And so then when y'all playing with more people, I played it. So it's a, it's one that I enjoyed, no matter if it was two or the whole group. Yeah. So that's a great honorable mention, really top 10 material if I had a physical copy. Uh, another one, also possibly top 10 material. This is a recent one I enjoy that we only have played online on Tabletopia. It is Smartphone Inc. Oh. I really like the implementation that they have online. I really like there's this card system that's secret to everyone. It's how you choose the actions for your entire round is laying these cards on top of each other and they cover up certain icons. So you got to be strategic about how you're going to place these cards because you could be covering some action that you really need, but you got to make sacrifices. So you can earn more cards and more spaces and stuff like that. But after that, you all reveal it and that kind of dictates how the rest of your rounds play out. And there's like six steps to a round or something like that. And so when you take step two, just for example, you look at how many icons you have regarding that. And I think that's a really cool way of uh, making a game because things have changed going from the beginning of that round to the end of the round where you wish you could change the way things are going to go, but you can't. Mm. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really cool game. Not much to look at on the table as far as um, visuals, but for what it does, it does well. Yeah. So 
My final oh. honorable mention is on the table. There are five games still on the table. I'm I'm changing my thought process now that a couple of games have left the table that I thought might have been higher up to the top. Because really, I thought silver and gold might have been like up there, high up there. But then when it when games started leaving, I was like, Arr! so now with what I see left, I want to say it's Pandemic Le Legacy Season 1. The final honorable mention? Mm -hmm. That's the final honorable mention. Pandemic Legacy. One right. <laughs> That's my final uh, honorable mention. Pandemic Le Legacy Season 1. It's a great experience. I don't put it at the top 10 because, because we're, we're never going to play it again. It's been sitting on my shelf since we played it. You can see it has a huge layer of dust. dust. Well, I, yeah, I can see it. You can probably <laughs> see that. Nah, it's, it's subtle. But yeah. Yeah. Lots of dust. And I don't want to put a game in the top 10 that is caked with dust. And it's, and I Scattergories. Know that, oh, <laughs> hey, Scattergories, so, I think, was in my honorable mentions. Oh, it was? Yeah, I think it was oh, in my okay, honorable that's mentions. True. Yeah. Uh, this is a fun game. It's a great experience if uh, you haven't experienced yourself. It goes on sale pretty often. Um, starting July 1st, going through July 6th, we are playing Pandemic Legacy Season 0 on twitch.tv slash heart zero. Please heart board games not heart zero <laughs> uh yeah we're meeting up with our old crew we're all going to meet in the middle of uh, our point in the u.s yeah. and uh, common point <laughs> yeah yeah we all live in different places now but we're all coming together and going to play through pandemic legacy season zero yeah. so i'm looking forward to that and in the, fact it's been sitting right there staring yay, at you the whole time the love of board games bringing us all back together yep we're going to just tear through it it's going to be a fun <laughs> time but pandemic legacy Season Zero was the one that started it all for us, so it has a very special place for me in the honorable mentions. Yeah. But now, it's time for number one. <gasps> number one. So we have four choices for number oh. one. Okay. I have to go with my gut and what I've been thinking was number one. Three red time. herrings. <laughs> yes. That um, I do like, by the way. I like all these games. But only one can be number one. And I'm going to go with my gut that I thought since the first moment the game's at the table, and that's Orleans. Go on, my gut. Or some people say Orleans. <laughs> Orleans. Orleans. <laughs> Yay! I was it correct. Is. I was correct. Yay! <laughs> it's right here. Strategy is everything, right? Mm -hmm. This is a great bag building game that oh, flows so well. Yeah. Um, it wasn't much of a challenge putting this at number one because I know I really like it. I enjoy playing it every time. I think I like the base game. Uh, I have, we have. Yeah, we have the expansion. We have both like, expansions. It's like a separate board. We have the co op like... expansion and the invasion expansion. And they're fine. Yeah. Oh, there's some parts I do like of it. Yeah. You but for the send most part, to a separate board. I'm but... fine playing the base yeah. game. But yeah, there's some parts I do enjoy playing the new new ones. But yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it's funny. I don't have much to say about it other than it's just so good. And yeah, it's. Try it out. <laughs> I really don't have much to say about it. It's just my number one. Well, if, if there's any indication to the different games in your top ten, mm -hmm. strategy has been the overall com, you know, like the common theme to a lot of the games in your top ten. So if this mm -hmm. says specifically strategy is everything, that definitely is a you know high ranking and then as the number one because it's very it's definitely that strategy for sure. Yep. So, what did you think of this top 10? Let me know in the comments below. Follow us over at twitch.tv slash heartboardgames. And right here, subscribe if you would please. It helps with everything we make here. But until next time, the box is, is closed. closed.